So Ellie, we know that importance of customizing a resume for every job, even though if you're applying customer service, but every company is different, they might have different language. We also tell our clients and have an accomplishment statement, but in your expertise, is there any difference when applying to IO roles that you are helping than let's say an HR role, an admin role? Mm -hmm. Great question, great question. So I do think that there are some differences mm -hmm. between industries. And I think it is a good idea, no matter which industry you're in, to connect with somebody who is currently in your field and get some tips and feedback from them. Um, so, and specifically in IO psychology, we, we do have a, a big focus on those accomplishments, mm -hmm. um, metrics and quantitative accomplishments. If you can get those on that resume, that is gold for your mm -hmm. resume. So we do focus on that a lot. The language that we use as well. So um, what, you know, what terms and, and definitions are in our field uh, that are applicable to the types of jobs we're applying for. So I even see sometimes too, not just tweaks and adjustments to resumes from an IO psychology standpoint, but also what type of IO job are they applying to? Because like mm -hmm. we talked about before, IO is the degree, the job is actually usually something different. So there's tweaks in there as well. Um, but also I will say too that resumes and advice on resumes a lot of times is really just a matter of personal preference and opinion. Yeah. So I encourage all job seekers and my clients to create their own set of principles for their resume based off of what they know. So to adapt all of the advice that they've gotten um, and adjust and, and, and use what works for them. But fundamentally, you know, keep it short, keep it clean and focus on those achievements understand that there's variance everywhere and there's going to always be a personal opinion on your resume. You're not going to please everybody with your resume. The yeah. most important thing is that you're pleasing yourself and you feel confident in that document yeah. because if you feel confident in that document, you are more likely to apply to jobs uh, that that really excite you because you feel confident and ready uh, for, for that interview and hopefully for that job. So that's actually what's most important is, is how you view your own resume. Mm -hmm. And we know that recruiters have six to seven seconds just to screen to see if this person is a fit for our company or has the qualification and move on. We also tell them like have summary of qualification, accomplishment, and other pairs. Do you think that two pages is enough, three pages, or it all depends? And in the in the summary of qualification. What should be there? Because I tell my clients, okay, read the job description word by word, line by line, and see if you have it, and then apply. And we also know that there's a lot of websites that you can upload your job description and your resume if there is a match, minimum 80%, and then apply. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts about that? Mm, yeah, so in terms of length, the resumes, in general, I like to say one to two pages. Mm -hmm. I have a strong preference for short resumes. I like to look at resumes at a glance and make a decision. Hmm. I know that some people might want to cancel me for that, <laughs> but um, if I can save time, I would like to. Hmm. So I do like a shorter resume if it's possible, especially when you're in that entry level to associate. Yes. Yeah. I understand that as you get more experience, it's natural that your resume will get longer. There's hmm. some folks I've worked with who are at the mid to senior level where a two page resume completely makes sense. And I'm totally fine with that. Um, but that's also why I say keep it clean, keep it organized, because if you have a two page resume, that's really easy for me to grasp and understand. I'm so fine with that. I'd rather take that over a one page condensed yeah. formatting errors. Everything looks different. That's so much harder for me to read. Yeah. Um, so in terms of length, I my advice is as long as it's clean, one to two pages is good. Maybe three if you're at that executive level. Yeah. I also understand that when you're applying to government jobs, um, that there's some slight differences as well. And sometimes companies will even ask in their job descriptions, they'll say like, list out all of your experience and like, don't worry about if it's long. So do, do you think uh, in that, those situations. Yeah, do you simple. think that let's say 10 years is the maximum and don't go after that, like 10 years is a good length? Yeah, yeah. That is actually almost precisely what I recommend, especially, and maybe caveat to that is relevance. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of how relevant that experience has been within the last 10 years. So if your last seven years have all been in analytics and you want to go into analytics, but the three years before that were all retail, you could mention those yeah. briefly if they're if they're at all applicable. Mm -hmm. But ideally you're gonna want to you're going to want to highlight your most relevant experience yeah. first. And we also know that 
after a resume is read by a recruiter, they will go on LinkedIn and see who's this person, maybe the face, have a feeling like if this is a good fit. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in we know that on LinkedIn, there's more option to put more information than a resume because as resume clean and precise and accomplishment, but you can increase more in LinkedIn. When you see there is a little bit of difference, is that for you a red flag or you read more on LinkedIn? Oh, no, I don't view it as a red flag at all. If anything, I might view it as a green flag that your LinkedIn has a little bit more information than your resume, because I'm thankful that you condensed your resume into the most relevant details, but that I can read more about you from your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. When it comes to LinkedIn profiles, I, I just created a video about this recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it comes to LinkedIn profiles, the your main goal is to give people a sense of who you are as a professional and what value you can bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And the elements of your LinkedIn profile, the about section, the banner, the headline, yeah. the experience, all of those are just components that contribute to that goal of helping people understand who you are and what you do. Um, and so if it looks a little different than the resume, that's natural, that's normal. Yeah. Um, and I think anybody who would view that as a red flag, unless there were differences that were substantial, such as um, your tenure at an organization or where you have actually worked job before. Title. Exactly. If there was differences like that, that could potentially be alarming. Um, however, for, for minor differences or maybe adding in a little extra detail to the profile, I think if somebody is raising a red flag for you on that, they're probably not that good at their job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's just my personal opinion. Thank you for those great tips. Uh, I appreciate that. Again, for the honest, if you have any other tips in terms of resume, you can leave them below. So tune in next time for another great question with Ellie.